Hello everybody and welcome! This week already brought excitement to the space community with SpaceX finally landing their latest Starship prototype known as SN16. After the previous serial numbers 8 through 11 all blew up spectacularly either on the landing attempt a few minutes after or somewhere up in the sky. Since everybody already talked about that, I want to showcase something completely different for you. The James Webb Space Telescope. I have to admit I haven't really looked into it into much detail before, so the only thing I knew was that it was delayed a lot and very expensive. And yes, there is also a Kerbal Space Program replica I made that I will show you here as well. In order to do that, we have to get the thing into space and therefore I also made an almost two-scale replica of the Ariane 5 launch vehicle. Why would a NASA telescope fly on a European rocket, you ask? Well, the European Space Agency also supplied $350 million in funding, which is only a fraction of the estimated $10 billion for the entire mission. But aside from that, Ariane 5 provides a very large fairing in which the James Webb Space Telescope barely fits in its packed state, since it is indeed a rather large vehicle. Now, the Atlas V would also be a rocket with a very large fairing with about the similar dimensions, but Ariane's payload capacity to geostationary transfer orbit is higher and the JWST needs to go even further. While we watch the launch of the Ariane 5 here, we have a few moments to discuss the telescope itself. Unlike the Hubble Space Telescope, which also takes pictures using visible light, James Webb will focus mainly on observing infrared light. It also uses a mirror that is significantly larger than that of Hubble, which makes it also a significantly larger vehicle overall. For James Webb to actually see enough infrared light without too much interference from unwanted light sources, mainly our Sun and its light reflected from Earth and the Moon, the telescope will be put really far away, at the so-called L2 Lagrange point, 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth. In very simple points, a Lagrange point is a position in space where spacecraft can basically linger without having to use a lot of fuel to keep their station. And L2 is basically the point behind all of the three bodies that could pollute James Webb's infrared light observation. The telescope also has other means to help with that, but we'll get to that after we have actually brought it there. Unfortunately, Kerbal Space Program does not include Lagrange points, so I decided to just put this replica at its geostationary orbit around Kerbin. In reality, Ariane's upper stage will send James Webb on its way to the L2 point while performing some roll maneuvers to prevent the delicate instruments from overheating. While I did not simulate this, my Ariane 5 rocket started to roll during ascent, but only with the first stage. KSP was just being KSP, I guess. And the Kerbal Kraken was unfortunately released during a few previous attempts when trying to launch this. Some parts suddenly appeared outside of the payload fairing. Then the rocket continued accelerating without any throttle input and then, well, see for yourself. Again. After some tedious rebuilding of some parts of the vehicle, it finally operated as it should and the second stage was well underway before releasing my James Webb replica on its journey to deep space. In order to be able to have power on its own, a solar panel will deploy while the telescope is still on its way to L2. If you notice, the thrusters are a little offset to counter the mass distribution of the payload. Funny enough, this is actually in line with how the real James Webb Space Telescope's thrusters will look like. Also, during the journey to L2, the Sun Shield will deploy. The way I'm going to show it to you here will probably make everyone involved in making, launching and operating James Webb cringe. I will perform in under a minute what is going to take days in real time. 
First the front sunshield pallet will drop down, then the second one after. The mirror assembly will rise up for better clearance. Then large thin membranes will unfold to form the actual sunshield. And not just one layer, but five of them. Unfortunately, since KSP does not offer us anything like that, I improvised using winglets. Lots of them. The entire telescope, as you can see it here, uses 1115 parts in the game. The sunshield is necessary for two things blocking out light from the sun and also to keep the temperature down. With each layer the temperature is reduced, but still it is not enough for James Webb to work. When the sun shield is fully extended, the secondary mirror is being deployed. If you're not familiar with these types of telescopes, the large mirror focuses light onto the secondary mirror, which then reflects this light to the sensor collecting the photons and hopefully generating some fascinating pictures. For this then to work, additional cryogenic cooling is required, with the excess heat being radiated into space via a radiator on the back of the mirror assembly. And finally, the mirror segments on the side lock into place, completing the largest telescope ever, sent to space with a primary mirror diameter of 6.5 meters. Coincidentally, its mass for launch is 6.5 tons, which is well within Arian's capabilities. Of course, you would never be able to see it in all its extended glory like this. The mirror and sensors need to be kept in the dark at all times, which is why the L2 point was chosen in the first place and why the large sunshield is necessary. If all goes well, the James Webb Space Telescope could give us more insight into the creation of the universe. It will look further into space than anything that came before, and by this looking into the past. The telescope will capture light that is billions of years old, emitted from the edge of the observable universe. Since this is old light, it will show us what happened back then and maybe give scientists the answers they are looking for. Looking into this, I got a new appreciation for the complexity and the engineering challenges that had to be overcome in order to build the James Webb Space Telescope. But for now, we have to wait until it launches, which is set for October 2021. A massive delay from the original 2007 launch date. Let's just hope the real James Webb Space Telescope will not run into the Kerbal Space Program specific hiccups that I encountered. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.